So I'm going to read an excerpt from the essay in the book and then um, a poem. Um, primarily, I'm a poet, uh, but when I was approached about this collection of essays, I really wanted to be part of it. <laughs> so I wrote um, an essay, but kind of like, not really, because I just took a bunch of my poems and took out the line breaks and then expanded it, um, which is like cheating. But um, but I think that after a lot of revision um, with Lila and Catherine, that it became something that I'm really proud of. Um, just a little backstory, my Iranian heritage um, for a lot of my childhood was was kind of a yearning for, for it. Um, my mom passed away when I was little and kind of with her was my direct tie to, um, to Iran and its culture. So um, this is called, the piece is called Learning Farsi. Almost every year, Bibi set up a haft scene, a traditional Noru's table adorned with the many Iranian symbols of renewal, love, and beauty. She told me many stories about the beauty of my great grandmother's table in Iran, all of the seven requirements accounted for while we watered the sabzi and covered it with a wet cloth for the night. I was always amazed by how fast the sabzi grew, tall sprouts of wheat grass shooting out of the seeds by the second day of nurture, full and thick like Iranian hair. On the 13th day of growth, we'd drive out to the river in the woods where they used to throw the sprouts with my mother. Bibi turned in her seat and telling me stories of Emu Noruz or Uncle Noruz, Santa's Iranian counterpart. My eyes wide with the fantasy. Papa would laugh along with her. When I was seven, Bibi was the first person to tell me that Emu Noruz and Santa weren't real. A heartbreaking moment of truth for me. At first, I refused to believe her. Believe what you will, she said to me and shrugged. It's reality. When she told me this, I thought of what had happened the last time we threw the sabzi in the river, the clump flying through the wind, settling on top of the water and rushing away. She'd said, Dada, quick, make a wish to Amu Noruz. And I had. When we got home, a present was sitting in the living room. I cried with joy. I believed. One night recently, while watching Donald Trump in a press conference, Papa slammed the remote control on the table. Stupid son of a bitch, he said, and struggled to get up from his chair. Sometimes when he drives, Papa will mutter strung together Farsi words under his breath. Zachrem mor pedar sag, he'll say, and blush after, as if embarrassed that he'd ever said such a thing. With some careful probing, I once got him to tell me what this particular curse meant. Snake poison to your face, father of dog. We laughed hard while I said it over and over in Farsi, a young child cursing everything and nothing all at once. Although I've never been there, I yearn for Iran. After my great grandmother passed away, I felt profound guilt for never having gone to visit her. For the times when I'd complained about talking to her on the phone, the language barrier being a problem I felt I would never conquer. When I was 14 years old and Bibi called to tell me the news of her death, I was dumbstruck. The United States suddenly felt smaller to me. I felt trapped. I wished silently, as I used to when I was little and we threw the sabzi in the river, that I could go to Iran or somewhere else and feel free. I thought of the balloons that we let go in memory of my mother and brother each year that tossed about and flew in the air with ease and wondered if they popped and fell back to earth, if someone found them and read the attached notes, wondering where they came from. I listened to Bibi's weeping, the phone digging into my cheek, her voice echoing in my head. Azizam, I wish you could have met her. The next thing I'm going to read is, is a poem that I wrote recently. Um, I wrote it actually on the anniversary of um, my mother and brother's death this year. And it's called um, About Blueberries, February 7th, 2020. Just minutes before the anniversary, I'm inexplicably thinking about blueberries and the evening of my lover crushing some with her teeth. Golru in Farsi is flower face, lacking equivalence. I've seen many things I haven't seen. Like a man sanitizing his utensils methodically with an onion on Daliestra Street in Tehran. Like the swift openings of many fruits. So yes, I am thinking about lifespan 
Under ideal conditions, a blueberry bush lives 60 years. The way my mother was, maybe, half-life of a blueberry bush, crown jewel of Iran, first masterpiece of God, green stars like crown and eyes, dark sheen before ruin. In Iran, there is no good word for blueberry. In the soil there, this fruit is nearly impossible, and so, since there is not much of a place to go, I look between my lover's teeth, and as I see it in these moments, there are worlds and universes and little blue pieces of flesh like night. It is just comfort, and I am just thinking. I am always thinking. There is only so much of life to live, only so much time before, under ideal conditions, so much, only so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.